This week on CrossFeed. Dr. Martin Jesus Obama Jr. Inaugural prayers are take. Al Sharpton's priorities. Schools promoting religion. And make a text message for Jesus. Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, Pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. I'm Pastor Jim Butler, Pastor of St. Luke's Lutheran Church out in Dedham, Massachusetts, just right next door to Boston. Welcome, everybody. <clears throat> and, uh, yes, welcome. It is good to be here. Um, just to let you know right now, we won't be making a production next week because I'm going to be out of town. And, of course, next Sunday it is the Super Bowl. So, Dale, your Super Bowl prediction. You know, I, I, I'm a I'm a Steelers fan. I have been ever since uh, they went up against the Cowboys back in, what, 70, what was that, 78 or something like that. Um, but we're going to watch the, um, the Super Bowl for the commercials and probably fast forward through most of the game. <laughs> when the Packers aren't in it, it's like, eh, who cares, you know? So, uh, yeah, we'll probably just watch the commercials. I, I'm excited that uh, this year is the first year we'll be able to watch it in HD because we got an HD TV. So, um, you know, that's kind of cool because really HD TVs are all about sports. Uh, the, I mean, you know, I mean, we've been watching some ice skating on it. It's like, oh, you can see the, um, you know, the the faces of the people in the stands and stuff like that. Like, well, yeah, but that's not, you know, there's what's the point you know and you can see the the seams on their clothing and all that kind of stuff which you know it's it's nice to have that kind of detail then you can also see um on like talk shows and stuff like that how much makeup people are actually wearing because <laughs> their faces look like they're plastic <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that with us because <laughs> we're low res enough that <laughs> you can't tell don't wear any wear any anyway, but uh, I I I'm an AFC person, being a Kansas City fan. But I really got to pull for the uh, Cardinals for this one. Um, in my heart, I just I want them to win. Founded in 1898, and this is the first time they've ever been in a playoff game. I mean, in a Super Bowl or any type of championship. <laughs> um, you can think about that. Uh, I don't know how many teams there were. They originally formed the NFL. Have never won an NFL championship, never an NFC championship, never a Super Bowl. But wow, uh, they're one of them. You think they give it up by now? <laughs> and of course, they used to be in St. Louis. Yeah. Yep. So I don't know if they were in St. Louis when you were there, but they were when I was. See, I have I had uh, um, kind of an interesting week. There was um, an. This is, uh, I've got a bit of a, a challenge, or maybe you want to call it an invitation. Probably invitation is a better word. Um, just the way I'm going to tag this episode, uh, I imagine we'll probably have uh, some Latter-day Saints uh, catch it. And, and that's because I'd like to offer an invitation. I haven't even talked about this with Jim, but we've kind of talked about it, stuff like this in the past. Um, but here's what I'd like to do. If there are any Mormons, Latter-day Saints, uh, whatever term you want to use for yourself that are watching this all right if you have either iChat on a mac or um, we probably do it with aol instant messenger we'd like to have you come on our show um and we'd like to talk about see i had uh this week i posted a uh, note on twitter um and uh my crossfeed news is my twitter name if anybody wants to follow me and um I, I was looking for uh, podcasts, for family uh, podcasts, and I noticed that, wow, a lot of the podcasts out there, um, the family ones, are run by Mormons. And uh, and I, I posted a note and I said, wow, a lot of the, the family podcasts are run by Mormons. Where's all the Christians? And... Um, and because I know that, you know, Mormons have a big uh, push for, you know, family-friendly emphasis and stuff like that. And um, and so it didn't really surprise me, but I was just surprised that, really, maybe I was just surprised there are so few family podcasts out there. Well, anyway, I got a response 
on Twitter from a couple different people um, that said Mormons are Christians. And we had a bit of a talk, and, and I actually had to go to LDS.org and do a little research um, on uh, Mormon teachings beyond what I, my understanding was, um, especially how they define faith, uh, which is a little differently than we do, or rather they've got like seven different definitions, or not faith, I'm sorry, not faith, correction, saved. Um, they they have several different definitions for the, the term saved. Um, and, and so what I would like to do is to have... Um, you know, a couple, preferably um, Mormons on the show, and to just spend some time talking about the differences between our religions. And then our listeners and viewers can make their own decision about whether Mormons are Christian or not. And um, and so I think it would be it would be fun. I'm not trying to, like, you know, throw down the gauntlet or anything, and, um, you know, we'll be nice. And, and Jim won't make any Battlestar Galactica references. <laughs> um, but uh, but it, I think it would just be, it would be really enjoyable. I think it would be really educational for everybody. Um, and, and I always enjoy, you know, talking to people of, of other beliefs and that. And um, because I have, I've had a lot of Mormon friends through the years and, and still do, um, you know, I, I think that that... Uh, uh, group of teachings in particular are of, of specific interest to me. It's something I've done a lot of research on and stuff, but you know, I kind of like to hear it from uh, discussing with, with people who are in the midst of it. And uh, so if you're interested, and, and we're specifically looking for someone who is a practicing um, you know, Latter-day Saint, not uh, 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 someone who came out of it or something like that. I want someone who is uh, favorable to that, you know, um, not, not someone with an axe to grind. All right? So if you're interested in, in coming on the show, uh, we usually record on uh, Thursday nights, but once in a while on Sunday nights um, at about 8 o'clock central. Uh, so adjust for your time zone. Um, and, uh, and if you're interested, send us a note, podcast at crossfeednews.com. Right? Cool. My question, though, would we let them pray? <laughs> to the Santa Rosa County School District. You were waiting for that, have you? <laughs> no, I just been. I just thought, okay, this will fit in. Um, and which there's a uh, um, a federal judge has issued a, an injunction against uh, this school district because they had uh, to discontinue policies and practices that promote religion throughout the school the school district according to a press release from the ACLU. Um, <clears throat> it said that they would have uh, Bible readings and uh, they would have prayers at the uh, graduation and they were always, th almost always led by representatives of the Christian World Order or the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Uh, and uh, also says that... Um, Apparently, they, they uh, also planned and financed religious baccalaureate services. So the injunction prohibits all district officials from the following. Promoting or sponsoring prayer during school-sponsored events, including graduation. Planning or financing religious baccalaureate services. Holding school-sponsored events at religious venues when alternative venues are reasonably available. Permitting school officials to promote their personal religious beliefs and proselytize in class or during school-sponsored events and activities, or doing anything else that unconstitutionally endorses or coerces religion. That's kind of broad. Depends how you interpret the Constitution. Okay. Um, it can only be attributable to human error. This is... I, I think that I'm... Boy, just the way that they're doing it, I kind of sort of side with the ACLU on this one. Oops. Sorry about that. Um, because I, I don't think that... Be, I think specifically because they're promoting a particular religion um, that, that I get kind of nervous about this. I mean, if my kids went to this school, and um, my kids being Missouri Synod Lutheran kids... And the teacher were uh, specifically promoting um, a 
religion that I'm not, that I don't agree with. Or, I mean, honestly, for that matter, even if it was a Missouri Synod Lutheran teacher uh, promoting it, just because, um, you know, if, if you allow that teacher to promote their particular religion, then what's to stop other teachers from promoting whatever they believe and teach? It's either that or you wind up with prayers or something that are so generic it's like the god of our understanding <laughs> well yeah we, we talk about we can talk about uh we'll get to that later. Beijing here later on <laughs> but um i remember george will in writing in the column about uh, he objects to people who object to prayer in in, in public schools and he uh <clears throat> quoted from a, the prayer of a female rabbi uh, at a graduation in Rhode Island. Uh, and I mean, it was... But he quoted a prayer? Yeah, yeah. He, I well, mean, he, he didn't actually... He, 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 he said that, there, that this, this was a prayer that was given these people objected to. And it was basically, oh, okay, you know, it. oh, God, whoever you are, you know, we, we worship you, we thank you for this day, yada, yada, yada. He says, well, what's wrong with that? And I'm like, well... <laughs> it's just kind of like you know, you know, why not pray to the great bird of the galaxy or something? You know, it's it's it, there's just nothing there. Oh, flying it's, spaghetti monster. Yeah, yeah it, it was kind kind of like well, like I said the God, you know, God as we understand Him, you know, whatever it is that we, the grand architect of the universe. Right? Yeah, it, you know. Um, so <clears throat> that would be my you know the. the you either got to water it down to the point where there's really nothing there, or you have to be specifically Christian. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, and I don't know who the ACLU. I don't know any of the people who who uh, you know they argued this on their behalf or anything. I do recall though that many many years ago <clears throat> there was a, a similar case, and in that particular situation, they are they actually sued on behalf of a family for, who are Wisconsin Synod Lutheran. And, uh, of course, one of the rules of Wisconsin Synod is you don't pray with other Christians uh, unless you're in complete agreement with them. And they objected then to, you know, these Baptist prayers in their school. This was in Louisiana. Um, and they, it's interesting because they were called atheists and everything else. <laughs> of course, you know, they're, they're, they're Lutheran Louisiana. God only knows what they thought they were. They did Baptist or Catholic down there, you know, so... <laughs> So yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the problem with prayer in school, and, you know. And I've I've heard different people talk about it, and um, I know a lot of Christians that are very much in favor of prayer in school. But you got to understand that if it's not a Christian school, um, you know, if you're going to allow one kind of prayer in school, you got to allow prayer of everybody else in school too. And uh, boy, you know, I just don't want my kids to have to, you know, have a the um, <laughs> prayer of the religion of the week, you know. <laughs> All right, well, we're having Christian prayer this week, and, or else, you know, some generic kind of thing. This is unlike, by the way, that the, the court case just in, um, or was that, uh, Illinois, where they just had a moment of silence during the day, uh, in the morning, and they took away that minute of silence, saying that was some sort of religious coercion. And I'm not sure how in the world, you, you know, kids sitting down quiet for a minute uh, can be considered religious coercion. You know, they can do whatever they want to, to th for that minute. Yeah, I don't have a problem with a moment of silence. That that actually seems like a good idea, just to get everybody to relax, if nothing else. You know, you could at least argue it that way. Um, it's certainly not, um, you know, promoting any particular religion, which really is what this comes down to is, are you promoting a particular religion? You know, there's, no, there's nothing in the Constitution that says that um you know that you can't promote religion i mean uh, if you want to know what the writers of the constitution thought about that uh look at the, the the buildings that those same writers commissioned uh to be built uh in washington dc you know um and and in different parts of the country there's bible verses all over everything you know all right speaking of prayer that brings us to president obama's uh, in inauguration, and there were, of course, several different prayers there. Um, one by uh, Bishop Gene Robinson, one by um, Rick Warren, and one by uh, Joseph Lowry. So, what? Which pastor should we start with? Well, I guess well, we can let's do them in order. Yeah. So, 
Uh, Gene Robinson first, right? Yep, there's V. Gene. There you go. Um, all right. This is. I'm trying to decide which is the worst of the batch, and I think it was this one. <laughs> but it's, well, I would say, uh, yeah. Um, started now, on a bad note, ended on a bad note. Yes. Now, well, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh God of our many understandings, we pray that you will. <laughs> Stop right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, this is a Christian bishop, all right, supposedly, all right, and we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt and assume that he is Christian. Um, I haven't heard anything, while I've heard many unbiblical things come out of his mouth um, and his, his pen, uh, I have yet to, um, to hear anything specifically unchristian, um, you know, d d denying the divinity of Christ or the resurrection or something. But then again, I'm not a real scholar on Gene Robinson either, okay? Um, oh, I have to, he was on uh, Stephen Colbert, and uh, it was a great quote. Um, he says, uh, Colbert says, Boy, it must have been difficult to navigate through the crowds when you can only move diagonally. <laughs> and, and, and Robinson counters, Ah, you got to remember, there are queens on the board, too. <laughs> so I'm sorry, that, that cracked me up. <laughs> So anyway, <clears throat> back to this prayer. Thank you for that insightful, <laughs> in-depth, useful comment. You know, I don't watch Colbert very often, but I'm always amused when I do. <laughs> I, I wasn't watching the episode. I just saw it on Twitter, actually. <laughs> he doesn't watch... And he actually watched Hee Haw for the jokes and, and, and music, and no, not for the girls that are in the shorts. <laughs> actually, given the fact that I was, what, six? <laughs> that's, I'd say that's probably right, yeah. <laughs> I do remember watching that as a kid. Um, <laughs> never liked the music much, but... Anyway, okay, so God of our many understanding. This is a Christian. <laughs> oh, okay, yes. <laughs> this is a Christian okay, bishop. Now, well, now, what he said is he was, uh, three years ago, he had diagnosed with alcoholism, and so taking part in Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, you have this prayer to be, um, um, <clears throat> you know, um, one thing of the things I've learned in the 12 step program is this phrase, the God of my understanding. It allows people to pray to a God of really many understandings, and let's face it, each one of us has a different understanding of God. None of us can fully understand God, or else God wouldn't be God. Well, I at least I, you know, agree with that last phrase, uh, but still, you know, the, the way he, he phrases it, it just sounds like you can't, un whatever you happen to believe, that's good enough. Right. Or as, you know, right. he used to say, you know, it doesn't matter what you believe so long as you're sincere. Which is a crock. Which is a crock. <laughs> You can be sincerely wrong. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So, yeah, this is... I, I, if you're going to ask a Christian bishop to say a prayer, then expect that he's going to say something Christian. You know? I mean, otherwise, get it... You know, it's it's kind of like what I tell people that want to have um, play secular music at a wedding in a church. Like, if you want to do that, then... Have your wedding in a, you know, have the justice of the peace do it. Or have it in a, you know, in a hall or something like that. Um, I'm a little more, um, I, I, I'm not quite that blunt about it usually. But, you know, kind of, I generally like to say something like, I think that would be a great song to play at your reception. <laughs> you know? Right. So. Which is what I say as well. And, of course, a friend of mine always had a couple who wanted to have John Lennon's Imagine to walk down the aisle, too. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's perfect for playing in a church. Yeah, that's right. Well, but Gene Robinson might have liked it now, you know. Imagine, there's, you know, heaven, there's no hell, there's, yeah. you know, no, nothing out there. Just this God of our many understandings. Um, you know, who, uh, and it just, you know, bless us with our, bless us with tears for a world which over a billion people exist on less than a dollar a day, where young women from many lands are beaten and raped for wanting an education. 
10,000. I wonder what lands those are. Uh, <clears throat> and thousands die daily from malnutrition, malaria, and AIDS. Bless us with anger, discrimination at home and abroad against refugees and immigrants, women, people of color, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people. Because and nobody ever discriminates people. against men. Or, uh, what? Nobody ever discriminates against men. Nobody ever discriminates against white people either. We heard we, there, was, there was no discrimination this past week against white people of any kind, you know. Right. So, um... All right, you know what? I gotta let's just. I just want to get this off my chest right now, since we're talking about the inauguration. All right, I am so sick of hearing about our first African American president. You know what? I'm. I. You know. I. I support President Obama because he's the president. I. I really. I want the best for him. I. You know. I, I pray that that God would show him his will and and that he would do the right thing and you know and act on on for the best of the people. Okay. But you know what? If anybody else voted for him because of the color of his skin, that was wrong. <laughs> right? Maybe maybe I should I should hold this until we get to the Martin Luther King thing, but I just this is just really or I should say to that or, or to Lowry's prayer. But you know, you see that here, here here's the difference in our ages, you know. Uh, I, I'm not so old that, that I don't remember, you know, blatant discrimination against blacks. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. and I, uh, I knew people, uh, I knew in my last congregation, one of the, you know, told me about not being able to drink at the, the white fat water fountains down south. I mean, you, you have to understand, you know, and if you think about, you know, the Middle East, where they hold on to anger for generations. And, you know, we in, in just two generations went from a man, it went from a time when people could not vote, could not eat at counter, you know, uh, certain lunch counters, could not um, drink at, white, at certain faucets, could not use certain bathrooms, could not go to certain hospitals, to electing a black man as president. That, that, that is, I think that shows the greatness of America. And, yeah, yeah. I think this is yeah. something to be, re to be re for that we should be rejoicing. My problem with him is I disagree with his ideals. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm not quite libertarian, but I could be. I, I really do believe in a small government. Uh, one of my problems with George Bush is that he, you know, he kept kind of, you know, it was kind of like it was kind of weird because Bill Clinton stood up and said the era of big government is over, and George Bush kind of like said, oh well, maybe not quite. Uh, <laughs> you know, in many ways they were, you know. Um, um, so, you know, that's 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 my that's some of the problems I've, I've got with it. But um, I'm extremely proud of the fact that we did elect a president of color. I'm and proud of the fact that it was possible. All right. I mean, and I think that I mean, yeah, it, it is. It does say something. I think it says something very positive. But the fact that many people voted him for him, and, and according to polls, this was the case. A lot of people voted for him, not because of his um, of his ideals because of his policies or anything like that, but specifically because of the color of his skin. Well, I'm sorry, but that's racism too. That's just like well, I'm going to prove that I'm not racist, or you know, by voting for someone that's not the same color as me, or for that matter, um, for all the blacks that voted for him. You know, what is that saying? You know, Dr. Well, King. So he said, well, "You should judge a man based on the content of his character, not the color of his skin." Well, I would say two things. Number one, the people, a lot of, the, most of them weren't going to be conservative Republicans who were going to vote for him. True. Okay, they were. I mean, the differences between Joe Biden, who you know considers you know his president to be an articulate, smart black man, uh, which has never seen been, been seen before. Uh, you know, clean too. Uh, you know. I wonder if they ever talk about that comment sometimes, you know? Gee, Joe, do you think I'm still clean? Uh, anyway, so, uh, uh, you know, I, but really, the difference between Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, was, was, was minuscule. So, you know what? Um, between, you know, bringing the Clintons back, uh, having the plagiarizer... And, you know, having uh, 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 Obama, which, you know, I would probably have gone voted for him, too. Uh, yeah. 
Well, there's certain things I like about him. So, you know, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But I just, I don't know. I guess it, I, I got tired of hearing it because I kept hearing it over and over and over. And it was just like, at what point is he going to just be the president? You know? Well, it's like, you know, uh, when did Jackie Robinson stop being the first black player, baseball player? You're right. He still hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there is, and this is something, it, it is historic, and, you know, it's, it's something, a piece of history. I mean, again, you think Jackie Robinson, you know, it, it, even in northern cities had, had stuff thrown at him yeah. when he was playing baseball. Yeah. You know, this is, this is, this is something to but, be, you know, but there's, back to the prayer. Okay, We're off the subject, so. back to the prayer. Oh, you yeah, know, so, well. Uh, Let's, let's, let's get back here to Jeannie, Jean's prayer here. Um, or let's move on. I mean, but again, I mean, it's just... Um, All right, th there's a couple uh, points in here. There, there's some stuff that I like that he said, some stuff that I didn't like so much. Um, uh, you know, his uh, talking about um, bless us with anger at discrimination. All right. Um, fine. All right, I... You know, I don't agree with discrimination. Whether I, whether whether I agree with the, uh, you know, for instance, talking about um, uh, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people. All right, obviously, you know, we've talked about that before. I I, I think that 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 lifestyle is sinful. Um, at the same time, I don't believe in discriminating against um, people that live that lifestyle. Okay, um, um, but bless us with discomfort at the easy simplistic answers we've preferred to hear from our politicians instead of the truth how about the easy simplistic answers that we hear uh, from certain bishops uh, instead of the truth you know speaking of uh, you know homosexuality and stuff um, I, that just seemed really hypocritical to me for someone who has uh, taken the truth and, and just largely ignored it uh, for the sake of, of his ch uh, choice of lifestyle, his, um, I mean, this, his prayer for that matter. I mean, God of our many understandings is certainly different from I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And uh, so that, that just went, I just went, huh? Are you listening to yourself? Um, but I do agree with his, it says, uh, um, understanding that our new president is a human being, not a messiah. And um, there, there was a great bit on Leno. They were showing different people at the inauguration. And then this, this guy dresses, Jesus walked in the room. <laughs> they go, is that President Obama? Oh, no, 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 no. But boy, it's easy to mix the two up. <laughs> um. Uh, my, the other one I liked is help him remember his own oppression as a minority, drawing on that experience of discrimination that he might seek to change the lives of those still in who are victims. Uh, yes, uh, going to Harvard and um, Columbia, um, having lived in Hawaii, um, Indonesia. Um, yeah, actually, you know, that's, that's I hate to tell you this, Bishop, but a lot of African American people I knew that was one of the complaints that he he, he didn't wasn't a victim of oppression mm -hmm. he didn't really understand it because uh, he had a very different cosmopolitan lifestyle uh, matter of fact you know he he just call him uh, he he's really not in any way you know your stereo your, your typical African American he came at this in a very different direction but okay let's move on from his prayer let's go to uh, what I thought was the best of them, personally. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, last I forget, uh, our buddy there, Gene Robinson, on the uh, blog, The Friendly Atheist, uh, he drank it as probably the best because it only referred to God five times, and uh, it was the most inclusive one out there. In other words, it was the least godly. <laughs> That's great. So. There's, wait, there's one other line that I just want to mention. Um, Bless us with compassion and generosity, remembering that every religion's God judges us by the way we care for the most vulnerable in the human community, whether across town or across the world. My God judges me based on the merits of Christ, not on how compassionate I am to somebody else. All right. Um, and, uh, and by the way, every religion's God judges us. Uh-uh. Only the true living God judges us. The other ones don't exist. Right? Sorry, that was another one that really irritated me. So, 
There were a couple other things, but they were minor. Rick Warren. Uh, let's go to Rick Warren. Um, now, Rick Warren, I thought, was inclusive in his own way. Um, I mean, he made, and if you read this, I mean, he starts off, um, you know, uh, um, Almighty God, our Father, everything we can see and everything we can't see exists because of you alone. It comes from you, belongs to you, exists for your glory. History is your story. Scripture tells us, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. You are the compassionate, merciful one. And then he concludes with the Lord's Prayer. So it's interesting that, you know, Hear, O Israel, here he, talk, here he quotes the great Shema. Mm -hmm. And you are the compassionate, merciful one. That is definitely a uh, reference that's all over the Quran. Okay. And at the end, he says, in the, you know, praise in the name of, uh, of, of uh, Yeshua, uh, Issa, which is, uh, again, Jesus in, the, in, in American, English translations of the Quran, and uh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus. So I thought it was, I thought it was a, a very well done. It was it was inclusive without actually compromising. There was, you know, right. there was there was stuff in it where it's like, boy, you could have been a little stronger on this, but at the same time, it was undeniably Christian. You know, well, undeniably. Yeah. And again, here, this is what I like. We're grateful to live in this land, a land of unequal possibility, where the son of an African immigrant could rise to the highest level of our leadership. See that's that's what I think you know I I to me that that he's absolutely right that is a you know the great thing you can say about this country that God has given us yep yep that's fine although the next line and we know today that Dr King and a great cloud of witnesses are shouting in heaven do you really think that in heaven they're watching the inauguration that I don't know that just seemed a little um um pompous or not not pompous what's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Oh, it's not pompous. It's a little rhetorical. It's it's it maybe a little bit overblown. And 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 frankly, and, uh, I've I've also heard, and I can't verify this. Uh, there's at least some question about uh, uh, Dr. King, uh, even though he's a reverend. Um, there's some question about uh, his belief in the divinity of Christ and, and some things like that, but I, I don't know. That's a taboo subject to discuss, and I don't think there's enough information on it to, you know, to to be absolutely sure about it. But, um... The, well, uh, he was uh, definitely influenced by Cohn and his black in early black liberation theology. I mean, uh, there's no question about that, but that's that's beside the point. Yeah, but, uh, but uh, there was, uh, I think my my favorite paragraph is when he said, and and now listen to this and how different this is from um, like uh, Robinson's prayer, because he 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 definitely kind of focuses uh, again a sort of a, a law thing, but um, and and he says when we focus on ourselves, when we fight each other, when we forget you, forgive us. When we presume that our greatness and our prosperity is ours alone, forgive us. When we fail to treat our fellow human beings and all the earth with the respect that they deserve, forgive us. And so, you know, here again, he's he's talking to the Christian God right there. Because the Christian God is the one who's all about forgiveness. All right? There is no other God that, that is all about forgiveness the way the Christian God is. And um, so, so that I, I thought was beautiful. He he sort of emphasized that um, you know the need to look out for others and and not be full of ourselves and, and things like that. Like the other prayers, you know, all three of these prayers do that. But his did it in a Christian way. I mean, he in a, a you know sort of roundabout way did a um, did it with the gospel. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, or, or at least mm -hmm. did it with gospel. I, you know, I can't really say it, the gospel. It's not like he, um, you know, talked about the cross anywhere. But, but it was. We're talking about God's forgiveness, all right? Does God forgive us? Yeah, yeah, He does. And, um, you know, because of Christ. And and while He didn't quite go that far, um, there was at least. I don't know. I was I was happy to see that in there. So and then right. there, there's definitely. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I mean, the, it was definitely a Christian um, prayer. Yeah, I mean the way that he had it. I asked this in the name of the one who changed my life. Um, I wasn't completely thrilled with how he said that. 
just because it, it kind of sounded like, well, this is my God, you know, and it, it almost came across, and maybe just because of the um, of, of Robinsons that that kind of uh, you know influenced or whatever, but um, or you know influenced my perception of it. Um, but it sounded sort of like this is my God, but not necessarily yours. Um, which I mean, you know, was the case with a lot of people, but it just sort of sounded almost like, um, like, well, you pray to who you want to, but I'm praying to Jesus, you know, kind of thing. Well, I, don't, I think that probably was part of part of the idea. Yeah, you, know, you you go ahead and pray whoever you want to. I'm going to pray to Jesus, but you know what? Jesus changed my life. You know, there's a little bit of a personal testimony. Um, yeah. And again, I think you know, given the situation, I mean, to stand up and you know to say. Yeah, you know, I pray this in the you know in 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 the only name worth praying, and that's Jesus. And you know because he's the only God. I mean, if you if you go overboard yeah. with making it exclusively yeah. Christian, you know, then you know I think it, it's a hard thing. I think you know, but he 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 made it what was clearly a Christian prayer, um, and clearly a, um, uh, a I thought a good confession of Jesus. Yeah, and I liked how he did Jesus' name in the different languages, um, just because it was sort of like, all right, not only is Jesus my God, um, Jesus is for everybody, regardless of who you are or what language you speak. Um, so, you know, I kind of like that, too. So, and then there's Joseph Lowry. Now, I got to admit, this this was probably, now I didn't get to watch, I didn't watch the inauguration. This probably had to be a very deeply moving day for him. I mean, when you think, you know, he did walk with Dr. King, um, you know, and to have, you know, uh, 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 a black man elected president. You know, I, I thought again, I thought overall it was a good prayer. I thought it was a good Christian prayer. Uh, okay, there's this there's sappy line was bless President Barrack, First Lady Michelle, look over our little angelic Sasha and <laughs> Malaya. Okay. I mean it kinda reminded me of the beanie ba- new beanie babies, you know. <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah, you know, they, just like, <laughs> that's right. So I just thought, Beanie Babies based on them, but the but they're not really based on them. Ty denies that they're based on them. Like it's just coincidence. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so they don't have to pay royalties. They have that name, and they're black. <laughs> so anyway, I just thought that was a little bit sappy, the little angelic things. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. And then I guess I'm, I'm waiting for the um, the 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 Sasha and Malia precious moments figures. You know, <laughs> two drop eyes. You know. <laughs> Yeah, they're probably out there already. And of course, what really bugged me, and this goes back to our earlier conversation, was the last paragraph. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the memory of the saints who, from their labors, rest and the joy of a new beginning, we ask you to help us work for that day when black will not ask to be get back, when brown can stick around, when mellow yellow will be mellow, when the red man can get ahead. Sorry, and when it needs white a will embrace, <laughs> and when white will embrace what is right. I mean, I mean, it was. It was. He was trying to be a comedian instead of a pastor. Well, I don't know about that. Although they said there's laughter. No, I, I, I mean, that what got me is white will embrace what is right because up to this point, white has embraced what is wrong. Yeah, yeah, completely, you know, and I talk about racist. I'm sorry, but that's a racist comment. You know, I'm sorry, but I'm not racist, right? And and if, you know, if I had agreed with, uh, with President Obama's positions on various things, I would have voted for him, right? Because I don't care what color a person's skin is. You know, I care what they stand for. And... So, to, this I'm, this is a, a very broad, uh, overreaching, um, overgeneralization that was completely inappropriate. So, uh, right. I just I just thought you know, um, you know it, it it just actually 
instead of the the beatbox, I thought more of uh, Paul Simon's Fifty Ways to, to Leave Your Lover. <laughs> yeah, that too. And what does when yellow will be mellow mean? I don't know. I, I you know. I mean, quite rightly. I'm sorry. This, you know, <laughs> what? Quite rightly. <laughs> Yeah, they call me man. Um, oh, yeah, though. Yeah, I guess that. Okay, um, we can say that. Um, I won't. I won't. There, I won't go into anything that's going through my mind right now. It's pretty off color, and we, we, we won't go there. No pun intended. So I just, yeah, it's yeah, no pun intended. But no, I just thought. I mean, when the red man can get a head man, I mean, if I was Native American, I would have been so insulted by that statement. Mm-hmm. Uh, they used to, um, you know, appear the um, UMA- University of Massachusetts, now called the Minutemen. For some reason, they were at one time called the Red Men. I mean, you know, I thought Minutemen made a lot more sense, considering, you know, but they were with yeah. the Red Men. And, and then somebody figured out that was that was kind of racist, you know, just like the Washington Redskins is kind of racist. But, you know, to say that in a, you know, for him to say that in a prayer, that was, that was, I've been, I would have been so offended. You know, especially given that, you know, he's he's all about, um, you know, equal rights and, and, and treating people as equals and, and all that kind of stuff. And, like, and you come out with this goofy thing, like, you're just going for the crowd. You know? I, I who are you... Who are you talking to here? So, if, I mean, you know, there's even this line right after the little Sasha and Malia thing. Uh, he says, um, we go now to walk together, children, pledging that we won't get weary in the difficult days ahead. And I was like, I thought this was a prayer to God. Now he's talking to the people. Make up your mind. Who are you talking to here? And it seems like he, you know, that was like foreshadowing because at the end, you know, like God's really going, oh yes, this is a good reverend prayer, and it, you know, and and, and I appreciate it because I, I certainly don't imagine God hearing this prayer and laughing about it. I just, so, yeah, it could be, but you know, I mean, I then there was always the, the, the pastor, you know, the, down in Concordia, Missouri, and I, I probably mentioned him before, who say, Lord, we pray for the family of of Gerhard Schmidt, who passed away this last week, and his prayer funeral will be held tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Visitation, you know, what we burial to follow, you know. <laughs> we say them, we just like, oh, the prayers are announcements, you know. I mean, we, we just like, see, I'm glad I told God when, when to show up. God may not have known otherwise. <laughs> yeah, in case God doesn't yeah, subscribe to the God. paper. <laughs> yeah. So, um... Hey, there Somebody, was one line in here that I liked, though. Yeah. Um, and that was the, his sort of adaptation. Um, we we work for the day when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, when tanks will be beaten into tractors. I thought that was a nice beat your swords into plowshares, it's sort of a modern version of that. And I just, I don't know, for some reason that just really hit me. And I, oh, I like that. So I'm sorry I interrupted you. Go ahead. Yeah. Josh, did you hear that, son? He wants to make your tank into a tractor. He wants to throw you out of work. They want my... The, you see, the nice thing about having kids in the Army is they're never going to be unemployed. So, you know, well, there's no recession. Look, pastors, you know. <laughs> there's always going to be sin, so... <laughs> Uh, anyway, no, I, I, you know, again, I didn't, uh, overall, I thought there was a lot there to like in that prayer. I really did. Um, you know, I thought there was a, uh, I don't think it was, uh, that badly done at all. And like I said, it had to be an extremely emotional experience for him to be up there. Yeah. Um, but since we've been doing some talking about the fact, about Dr. King, I mean, it is kind of interesting that, uh, the day after that, that, his, that uh, this inauguration was held after uh, the day after Martin Luther King Day, just and happens how it ha- how it uh, landed. Yep, just happened to how it landed. And this one article says, you know, I mean, for a lot of churches, um, you know, this was the, um, you know, that that it was that 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 the, the, the that it was almost as King Sunday was almost a. Um, uh, 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 Barack Obama Sunday, uh, Sunday, and I bet it was. Mm-hmm. 
you know, I mean, it's a, uh, you know, it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a, many black preachers touted the moment as a mark of America's progress toward a racially just society. Black worshippers saying, we shall overcome and pray to protect Obama's family and help the country follow Obama's leadership. Uh, one of the churches uh, that he, they mention in this is uh, First Cathedral in Bloomfield, Connecticut. Which, interesting enough, um, <clears throat> I uh, um, and it said more than 300 people filled the pews. I think that's probably off. I think it should be 3,000 if it's the church I'm thinking of there in Bloomfield, Connecticut. Big, huge church, black church. Uh, went to hear John Maxwell there. And, uh, you know, I can, again... It had to be, uh, you know, the 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 the, the fact that it just happened to fall right next to each other, uh, the the symbolism was just too obvious. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can go on your rant now. <laughs> well, I already did. See, that's the beauty of this. I already I got my rant in. Um, just except for the fact that, uh, you know, in in the Lutheran Church we we acknowledge the various saints, and there's been a lot of discussion about whether we should add uh, Dr. King. To our list of, of saints that, whose uh, dates that we observe, and we we <clears throat> we uh, acknowledge the saints not uh, that we pray to them uh, in the like the Roman Catholic Church does, but uh, you know we we thank God for them um, because it's because of them that um, by God's grace obviously that we have the gospel today. You know, it's by them passing it down. You know, I look to my parents uh, for bringing me to church, for teaching me about Jesus, you know, and to my grandparents for teaching them and, um, you know, and, and all of the, those who have under, undergone just tremendous persecution uh, through the years to make it possible for us to have the gospel today. Um, and, you know, and so, so we acknowledge that. And we also look to them uh, for the example that they set for us. You know, there's many, uh, my daughter has been reading the book Jesus Freaks, uh, which is uh, it's kind of a uh, adaptation of Fox's Book of Martyrs. A great book, and it just it basically it's just a list of of martyrs throughout the the years and, and their stories. And uh, she's been very inspired by it, and um, you know, and she as having read that book, uh, which she's she's read it several times, um, but you know she she finds it very inspiring and it really encourages her to take a stand for her faith you know and so you know we we look to the the people of the past and um that have gone before us and of course you know people of the present too um i guess i get concerned though uh when it, it's all this focus on a politician that really has not a whole lot to do with i mean he's a christian Okay, but he's not. There's really nothing at this point that where you look at him and you go, oh, "What a you know what a what a great um, you know example of of, of virtue or um, or of, of taking a stand for the Christian faith or or, or something like that." Um, you know, I it just seems like you're getting a bit too political. Uh, and it seems like this should be more of a, and I, I suppose it's because uh, in the black churches especially, uh, there's the, you know, the culture is so much a part of their theology um, that it's it's hard to separate the two. Um, and it's hard to separate politics from the church within the black church. I mean, when you think about, uh, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King was a pastor. Uh, Joseph Lowry was a pastor. Uh, Jesse Jackson was the Reverend Jesse Jackson. I mean, so much of their uh, strength, so much of their leadership uh, were, were churchmen and are churchmen. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's just part of the, the nature of the black church. Um, and so, you know, they're not going to. Ha they don't have our, you know, understanding of two kingdoms, yep. uh, as, as we put it in Lutheran theology so much. Um, it's just you know a lot of these are, again they're 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 Baptist or independent, um, but you know, again I don't think Dale, you and I can understand. 
You know, I really there, there's times I you know I get tired of people saying you know you, you just can't understand you you know you 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 know you're you're white, but I think in this particular stance, I really want to say you know, I think it was neat, and, and I think it's you know it's, it's neat to see sit so there through history, but you know I can't be like my member Ethel Paul and say you know I couldn't drink at a water fountain, you know, or you know to see. And, and, and or to see some of the other oppression some of these people live through, uh, or if they didn't live through it, their parents lived through it. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, I mean, it really says something, and uh, um, and I, I'm not going to begrudge anybody, who, you know, who, who wants to spend that time sharing and. and so long as they're not just cheering in, so long as they do say, God, thank you for bringing us to this moment. Mm-hmm. God, thank mm-hmm. you for what you've done here. For us, this is a tremendous thing. This is running long, so we're going to have to, we, I think we might wind up dropping a story tonight. Uh, but let's go from the sublime to the ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Al Sharpton. Of course, now, some of us, uh, like me, uh, I, you know, for me, Al Sharpton will forever be uh, associated with the Tawana Brawley case in which she ran out and said, you know, she was raped and everything and wound up being a hoax. So, um, I, even though he, you know, again, he's a black Pentecostal pastor, there's not a whole lot of, um, not a guy I have a whole lot of respect for, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, he, um, is really upset about the whole Proposition 8 thing. Um, and he is questioning why churches that backed the ban on gay marriage aren't focusing on bigger issues such as violence and poverty. Um, he said... Yeah. <clears throat> well, what I know, what, it get, what it gets me is, that, and I'm, again, I'm not sure, you know, this is from, um, oh, this is from the Southern Voice website, um, he called out the Mormons and other conservative faiths for mobilizing to support Proposition 8 to ban gay marriage in California while, quote, refusing to be as involved in any other social concerns. That's ridiculous. I mean, that is, that is, you know, speaking of Mormons, I mean, holy cow are the Mormons involved in just all kinds of uh, social activism. I mean... I'm sorry, that's, that, that's why I have a hard time talking to people about their beliefs, because people go, well, they're so nice. They're so involved in helping people and in, in all this kind of stuff. I mean, they're, you know, they're huge into that. We, I mean, sorry, but we could take a few lessons from them in the Lutheran Church. Well, yeah, well now, uh, wait a minute. Did you know the largest network of social service agencies in the country is Lutheran Service okay. for, uh, in America? Fair enough. We are bigger than Catholic charities. For, and that's, you know, exactly, you know, don't ask me how many churches I know. Um, Lutheran, Baptist, uh, Pentecostal, conservative churches sent people down to rebuild Katrina, after Katrina. Sent people down to uh, uh, help out in other Gulf states there that, would, that have been de- destroyed. Have helped rebuild after tornadoes. Um, it, it, were they involved with people uh, involved after 9-11? Yep. I mean, and, and and not, not to mention local. Not term like Red Cross, but long term. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've, we've still got our, our uh, ladies group is still making quilts um, for, the, uh, pe- for the Katrina victims um, and have no intention of stopping anytime soon. Uh, and for that matter, yeah, and uh, you know, locally, you talk about uh, uh, helping with uh, with poverty. All right, I'm on our local uh, board of directors for our food pantry. Um, just our little town of of uh, the nearest decent sized uh, town. By decent size, I mean about five thousand people. Um, it has two two food pantries. All right, because there's one of the local churches has their own, and then there's also the uh, community one that. That works with uh, social services and stuff to get people connected to it, and um, but it's run by the churches, um, all different churches, and uh, here in Iowa we don't have any black churches, um, <laughs> but uh, um, so talking about Sharpton, 
but right. I mean, but people are concerned about that. And you know what? Our food pantry has so much food that they're actually saying, all right, hold off right now because we don't have any more room for food. We can't even get it all on the shelves, right? Why? Because you, you, can, you can ship it out to us. Well, you know, there's other places around that we give it to. I mean, but you know, but still, you know, the point is, yeah, they're caring, they're involved, um, you know. Um, and then his this last paragraph, he said, "There's something immoral and sick about using all that power to not end brutality and poverty, but to break into people's bedrooms and claim that God sent you." Nobody broke into anybody's bedroom. Nope. Nobody made a claim that God sent them. Nope. And what for that matter, is, they're they're not even stopping anybody from whatever it is they're doing in the bedroom. This isn't about what they do in the bedroom at all. It's about redefining marriage. Right. And and, and well, the other thing gets me. I mean, it's like, you know, who, wow. And, and this is kind of making me kind of. Uh, you know, ending here from or talking about what we began earlier. You know, we talk about Rick Warren. You know, he was attacked because they didn't want him there because he had supported, you know, Proposition Eight. But who got, you know, who is one of the leaders in the evangelical world in dealing with situations like World AIDS and getting church, you know, getting the evangelical churches involved with it and dealing with poverty and world hunger and global warming and other issues? He has been. Right. Just because somebody is taking a stand for a particular doctrine or um, or a particular issue doesn't mean that they're not taking a stand for anything else. Right. And by the way, which church body is one of the leaders right now in dealing with malaria in the world? Of all churches, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. We, uh, we're, we're partnering with our, our brothers and sisters in the ELCA and with Ted Turner, of all people, to to fight malaria, uh, you know, throughout the world. Which, you remember, hey, you know, Ted Turner. Gene, Robinson was, <laughs> Gene Robinson was concerned, you know, he wanted you know, us to fight malaria. Well, we're, we're already out there doing it. So, you know, so, but, you know, that, that I mean, just, I don't know, I just can't stand straw man arguments. You, you, when you when you character make a caricature of something, you set up your straw man and you knock it down. You know, mm-hmm. which really shows nothing. But that's okay. I mean, I'm sure he, you know, you know, there's another Twan of Brawley out there waiting for him. Um, you know, this is the same guy too who you know complained about the you know the the, the, the Koreans coming into the black neighborhoods and you know whip the crowd to burn down a, a, a Korean grocery store. Um, so he's not a guy I have a whole lot of respect for. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I you know what about you know it's it's you know I, I'm sorry I guess I could turn this around and say all right uh, you know Mister or Reverend um, Sharpton um, you know okay why are you so concerned about uh, these uh, social issues and completely ignoring moral issues. You know, um, okay. same thing. Which you know, actually, they're they're tied together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They really are. They're they're, they're very closely. And uh, but anyway, it is. Uh, we've been going after this thing for almost an hour, so we better end it up before this this episode gets way too long here. And we'll pick up uh, the texting for Jesus some other time. Okay. Dale and I have given a lot of opinion tonight. I mean, dealing, talking about the prayers, talking about Dr. King, uh, talking about. Um, actually, I think we could have just, you know, dealt with uh, um, the inauguration and Al Sharpton and 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 the thing. I think we had had enough enough of a show just on that. The the three prayers were almost, you know, three stories themselves. Yep. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you think we're idiots. Maybe you think I'm an idiot. Maybe you think Dale knows what he's talking about, and I should just keep my mouth shut. I don't yeah, know. Not likely. Um, <laughs> we, not likely. <laughs> what is your opinion? Uh, what did you think of the prayers? What do you? What do you think of? Uh, maybe you're a fan of Al Sharpton. Um, like your comments at Crossfeed News at podcast at CrossfeedNews dot com. Uh, once again, uh, podcast at CrossfeedNews dot com. Uh, your, your your input, your thoughts would be really valuable 
uh, in all this because we, we dealt with some pretty controversial stuff tonight. Yeah, and we threw a lot of opinions around. You know, as pastors, we're called to, uh, you know, to proclaim the word of God. And if we were in the pulpit, you know, we wouldn't. Obviously, we preach differently than this, but on the show, we throw opinions around because it's a show. It's not a, you know, this isn't a, a service of the word kind of thing. Um, and so we offer our opinions too. And, and um, but, you know, we really, we value you know what we your are? opinions. We are pundits. There you go. We're pundits. That's how, this, this, this is a show where we, we are, you know, we, we, this is an opinion show. We are pundits. Like the McLaughlin group, well, we don't argue with each other all the time and yell and talk, you know. Hey, we did get a comment this week. Oh, um, well, we did. On, on YouTube. Um, referring to our last episode, which I was surprised because usually the episodes have to be up there for a little while before they get some traffic. But, um, yeah, uh, from uh, Analyzing, Le- or Analyzing Funny was this is uh name and uh he said first of all hi diddly ho neighborino um which would be a reference probably to the uh, simpsons you know st- uh, stuff in our logo um and uh, hopefully sees us not so much as a uh, ned flanders type or um <laughs> Revan lovejoy for that matter um <laughs> and uh but then he said uh we were talking about the scientology uh deal with the the guy that had that goofy outfit on and he said hey now angry gay pope rocks he's very smart in scientology just hates that <laughs> so you know t- still no real um intellectual comments on youtube but i thought it was kind of funny <laughs> so so analyzing funny if you're watching this <laughs> thanks for the comment really appreciated that yeah we like that one needed a laugh hey everybody take good care and we'll catch you later on Yep. All right, next episode. Good night, everybody. God bless.